they're not going to rebuild. How, they're how, not going to. Target is not. Target's going to get their insurance money. They're going to be fine. They're not going to rebuild that Target in in Minneapolis. And who's sure. that going to hurt? It's going to hurt that neighborhood. How great a moment would it have been if one of Trump's rebuttals, and all I would have to say is blurt out one sentence and then just let it stand and let Joe Biden fumble over himself. All he would have had to say is, if you want to help the black community, stop burning down their cities. Ooh. Just leave it at that. Oh, that would have Good. been like the best answer. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's all he would have had to say. And That's then you right. could have just watched Joe Biden try to backtrack on that. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. I would say that uh, Trump won this in a split decision. Hmm. Okay, and it's because I think Trump went... I think Trump got specific enough on certain issues um, that that he was able to land real punches on Biden, whereas Biden really did not get outside of his frame of he, – he, Biden was never put in a position where he had to do something he had not been able to do before. He never – he never uh, – he never uh, condemned Antifa. He never. He, he was never. He even when even when directly pressed on it, he, he didn't do that. Right. Um, but it certainly did. not There was no knockout punch tonight. There was no. There was no point where, where Trump really landed something, and then got out of his own way and let let the let the the, the punch land. So if we're putting it in terms of a fight, because I agree with you, I think that if we're putting it in terms of of a fight. There was at no point a counterpunch thrown, really, or at least not one that wasn't uh, that wasn't also answered with another counterpunch. So right. th there was no time where Trump like bided his time and just sort of held back and waited for for Joe to smack himself in the face, mm -hmm. uh, which is frankly kind of what I was expecting a lot more of. Yeah. So I, I I agree with that assessment to a great degree. Matt, what was your take on the the whole thing? Yeah, playing off that point, I think um, I, I don't know. I, I think it you know it, it's somewhere close to a draw in terms of um, who won. Uh, you know, I, I think I just have a theory here that you know Trump Trump always trolls. It's essential to you know who he is and how he does things. Mm -hmm. And you know at times it, it works for him, but it can be a two edged sword. I have a theory that tonight. He was trying to troll even harder than he usually does in attempts to I get Joe so discombobulated and fired up and mad and disorganized. And that I don't think that really happened. Um, at That's least right. I mean, you know, Biden didn't really do a great job um, either, but he didn't, you know, spin out and say crazy things and forget where he was and stuff. I think that's what Trump was trying to produce, and he didn't quite get that. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I don't know how the average undecided voter is going to see this. The, the thing that got me was how much Biden lied. I mean, look, the, the t thing that stood out about both candidates to me, Trump was the biggest jerk on the stage tonight. Biden was by far the biggest liar. Um, and I, I just yeah. don't know how well educated the average you know, non-political junkie is on this, but I mean, if if you know, if they're able to fact check him, that that's his credibility. That's the thing. Like, so much of what Joe Biden said will not hold up to even the slightest amount of scrutiny. And so, if mm -hmm. if he has people watch this debate and basically take everything at face value and they don't think about it again until you know maybe watch the second debate or something, then that's something that really makes Joe Biden look a lot better than he actually was. Yeah. But if you have somebody even do like maybe 10 to 15 minutes worth of research, a lot of what he said is going to turn out to be make him look bad in the retrospect. Maybe not right here, right now, but in the retrospect. But the media outlets that those people are going to be watching are not going to be the ones that are going to be scrutinizing any of those points in that. that. That's so what I'm many saying, people like, are going to miss that. They, they are. So they're so going to fact check Trump, but they're not going to fact check right. Biden. See, but see, Trump didn't really throw down many of the, of, the, of, the, yeah, of, the, of the things that you can, you can legitimately say that Trump lies about over his presidency. He didn't throw those out today. Mm -hmm. He That's wasn't. Awesome. He he really refrained from so many of the things that that can be considered a lie. That and Biden didn't back off of them. 
Biden, I mean, the, the U.S. Treasury Department says that Bo Biden, that, that uh, not Bo, uh, Hunter Biden took money from the Russians. It's not, it, that's a pretty credible source. And Biden just outright denied it. Yeah, that, that was and, one and, mistake that I think Biden made several times, and I pointed it out yeah. each time that I caught it, or at least tried to, that it's one thing for Biden to say uh, something to the effect of that was a legitimate business transaction or you know there was no corruption there, that had nothing to do with me, he did that on his own. He never said that. It was always, that's completely untrue, it's been discredited by sources, never named the sources, never said who discredited it, just... Uh, right. S- put it, threw it out there, let it hang on its own, and then never gave any specifics. Uh, and, and I think that that was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Right. Detaching himself from it would have been the smart thing to do. That's just what I would have different, done. Different, no different than admitting that his son was once a drug addict and has now changed his life around it. And, that, and of course, that had nothing to do with him. Then detaching from it and letting somebody else own it would have looked a lot better. Yeah. Did he get Bo Biden mixed up with Hunter Biden on the stage? Trump? Or was he I, no Joe. It Joe sounded wanted, to me like he was I think, trying to talk I think about Joe Hunter. I think I think Joe wanted I think Joe wanted to throw the Bo Biden thing out there no matter what Trump said. Mm. See, that's I, what I'm wondering. And if he was trying to get pity points or he, did oh, he's he absolutely trying to get, get his pity children points. mixed mm. up. I don't, I don't think it was I genuine. So. I think Both that was. Possible. I think yeah. he was trying to get pity points. So, Laura, what was your overall takeaway? I think the winner tonight was whoever was not watching this debate. <laughs> 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 I think honestly, I mean, this debate's not going to change anybody's mind. Um, mm-hmm. Trump arguably, arguably landed better punches, um, but for the voter who is never Trumper, who believes that Trump lies, I think that this was like the worst night for him, and that Biden, that Biden had like the best things. I mean. Objectively, I think Trump had the better night, but it wasn't a slam dunk for him. Okay. I don't believe this so-called debate changed any undecided voters' mind. Mm. I, it, I think you're right. I mean, I, ultimately, it is it's it's a draw. Where people stood before is where they stand now, and I do believe Trump should have been a lot more measured with dealing with Wallace, and should have held back a little bit more and showed a little more decorum there. And I was actually surprised that Joe Biden held it together as well as he did. And mm-hmm. I mean, we all we all knew to kind of expect him to be on his best game. And I wouldn't call that his best game, but it was better than I expected. So I'm going to and feel free to disagree with me on that, because that's why I have you all here. I think Joe Biden won. And here is the reason that I believe Joe Biden won. Um. I think this will be an analogy that hits home for most of our viewers, since most of you guys are are in the state of Alabama. When Alabama goes up against a cupcake team, they set the expectations, and that is because it's reasonable to set the expectations where they do. They basically go into that contest with the expectation of beating the brakes off of them and winning by four or five touchdowns. Mm -hmm. If Alabama does not do that, even if they wind up winning the game, it still looks like a loss for them. And the fan base is distraught and upset. They didn't cover the spread. Right. What happened tonight is that you had everybody, myself included, you you heard all of our – expectations of what the night was going to be like. I think Trump set the expectations so low for Joe Biden and most of his supporters were expecting this to be an Alabama style, just butt whooping for lack of a better way to describe it, that Joe Biden was basically going to be sitting there looking like a a half dead person drooling on the podium. And to his credit, Joe Biden didn't, about as well as he's done in this entire campaign. Not as good as, like, you know, 90s Biden, but still respectable performance. And because of that, because the expectations were set there and it was nothing like that, because it wound up being more or less a draw, because the expectations were expected it to be nowhere close to a draw, I think Biden actually winds up winning this in the sense that uh, Joe Biden's campaign could have theoretically ended here tonight if that had been what actually happened and because he wound up looking like a contender and that he can hold his own with Trump even though I think that on a technical level as a debater Trump won yeah 
that doesn't mean that it won with the American people. I think that Joe Biden walked away from something that could have been a bloodbath and basically walked away unscathed. And so that's a that's a win for he, him. He yeah. what what Biden certainly did was take take your football analogy a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Biden is in week 15 of the NFL season. He's already secured a place in the playoffs. He just needs to not get his quarterback hurt. Yeah. And that's and he did that tonight. He did not get himself he didn't he didn't blow a big hole in the foot in the in the in the the whole of the campaign. And he is leaning, if we believe the 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 the, the polls. I don't necessarily and, and believe I the do. polls. I do. I, I, I don't necessarily believe the polls. I, I think the problem with the polls is the polls all will all assume that we're still playing by the Clinton uh, Carville the gala map of 1992 and the and the Trump map is not that map and so if if Trump is wins over half the Hispanics in Florida he wins Florida it's a, and, he, and and if he wins and he you know they're saying that he's got uh, sitting on a tie in Minnesota if Trump wins Minnesota he wins so I mean, he's playing a different game than everybody else is doing, and I wonder if the polls are really are really catching that. See, but, that, that, that was but, kind of my contention. It's not that the polls are wrong; it's that they may be measuring the wrong. No, things. I yeah, I think that's right. But what I'm saying though is, mm. Biden again, we're still in a toss up. Right. That a, a midterm election is a is a referendum on the incumbent. Okay, the incumbent needs to be able to put away the challenger. And Trump didn't do that tonight. Now he, I think he did, slightly win the debate on points, but I don't think he put away Biden tonight. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. So yeah. before we get into some of our final thoughts, I did want to just thank Chappie's Deli for catering this whole thing and appreciate them uh, providing the sandwiches, the sweet tea, everything was delicious. That's just kind of the way it is at Chappie's. Uh, they they make a lot of different things, and obviously, just like everybody else, I got certain things that I like better than anything. But I don't think I've ever had anything bad from Chappies and uh you know incredibly family friendly they're a good company that's what i like about them uh good christian folks um and and you know service with a smile and uh one thing that really surprises me is how much people don't realize they have an incredible variety on their menu and normally when you have a place that has that kind of variety most of it's just not that good they're just kind of a place that does everything but it's all kind of mediocre Chappie's has fantastic. I've had their burgers. I've had their sandwiches. Uh, their casseroles are really good. Uh, it's it's just overall their menu is kind of loaded down. It's sort of an all star team of food, as it were. Mm -hmm. So be sure to check them out. They're on Perry Hill, Pepper Tree, Baptist South, Prattville, and Auburn. Uh, you know, be happy to have you anytime. And remember that kids also eat free. So when it comes to Everything that we've, we've looked at, the culmination, we, we've talked about the impact that it has on the election, whether or not it's going to change any minds. And I think there's a consensus in, uh, that basically this isn't going to change anybody's mind. Um, looking forward, do you think that there was anything presented here tonight that could cause problems for the candidates later? Um, only, if there's, only if there's fact checks on what Biden said, and there won't be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there will that, be, you know. but not from sites that people that are undecided are going to. Yeah, Daily yeah. Wire will beat the tar out of them with fact checking them, and that's yeah, great. Probably but, won't do yeah. any good. Yeah, yeah. Not from an election standpoint. Well, mm -hmm. only people who already agree with Daily Wire are going to look at that, mm -hmm. so. right? And then Facebook's fact checkers are going to fact check those, and then they're going to, um, yeah. Will yeah. Yeah. My, so will. Will anybody care that Biden was given a direct opportunity to denounce Antifa and he said they didn't exist? I think that was the most significant thing all night. Will will anybody will it I, I think it was very significant. Will will people notice that? Will they see it? Or is that part of the movie think, they're not gonna see? I don't think that we because we're political junkies. Us looking at that and, and seeing that it wasn't there, I don't think that that was impactful to the average voter that was just watching this tangentially, but here's where it might make an impact. Down the road, from now on, Trump can always point to that and say, look, 
He asked him, point blank, will you deny Antifa? He did not. Right. There are several well, key points in this and where if, if, if Trump will take a little more coaching the next go around, then this can be dissected and he can hammer hard at mm -hmm. many of these things in the next debate. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, there wasn't really a knockout punch. I don't know that there's maybe a 15 second clip that you can turn into a political ad out of this, or at least not mm -hmm. one that's coming to my memory. Maybe there was, and I just, you know, I can't think of it right now. But I do think that it was more of what Biden failed to do on this, uh, in the sense of he, he, he didn't outright deny Antifa. He didn't outright say, I'm not going to support the Green New Deal. And in fact, he seemed to give his blessing to it, even though he didn't come out and really endorse it either. I think that kind of is indicative of what the Biden strategy is right now, which is, let's say, as little as humanly possible, because we don't want to mm -hmm. tick off anybody, and we've already got the lead anyway. We're just trying to run out the clock to give another football analogy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where Biden's head is right now, and I think that that's what he was trying to do, and it sort of manifested itself in the sense that he tried really hard not to say anything. Again, mm -hmm. again, that, that strategy is a winning strategy, and it, and it could have worked for Biden tonight and it, it, if – if he really is playing the Clinton Begala Cargill map, if if new states are open, if if Minnesota is on, if Minnesota is is in play, in, in play mm -hmm. and Biden comes out and says there's no such thing as Antifa, how is that going to play in the suburbs of Minneapolis, St. Paul, mm -hmm. which That's have always point. been, which has always been, uh, which has always been relatively democratic, well, really strongly democratic, and at the same time, whether you, whether you think that, that, that James O'Keefe made the, the, made the case strong enough or not, sure. and even if there's no investigations into it, the ballot harvesting thing that's going to, that the operation that's, that was going on in Minnesota is going to be much lessened because there's going to be too many eyes on it. Mm -hmm. So, if Minnesota is in play, that changes the game. Because Minnesota, Minnesota never votes Republican. <laughs> they're the one yeah. state that voted for Mondale. In right, they're the one state that voted for Mondale. <laughs> and 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 you know, and the I've seen some analysis that says Trump doesn't have to have Florida, but Biden does. And again, if Florida is, See, if Florida, if if Florida, if he's if Trump is really making inroads in Hispanics, and and. I, I disagree with that analysis. I do. Though, I do agree with that. Disagree I, with it. But I think Trump has to win Florida. I'm just looking mm -hmm. at the numbers, yeah. and there's other states that he. Can, I think both of them have yeah. to win Florida. Florida is a, a determinable fight. So state. you think whoever wins Florida just wins it? Uh, I would be very surprised if that's not the case. I don't think we're. we're I not, think you're correct. I we're think not talking Bush. I think there's far too many variables. Well, but we're not talking Bush Gore in 2000, where had Gore won his home state of Tennessee, Florida wouldn't have mattered. No. True. But but I do think – I think that Biden can win without Florida. I think Trump can pretty much not win without Florida. I mean obviously mathematically there are some states he could pick up, but it's such a it, – that's such a high hill to climb. I, I think agree. that Trump yeah. pretty much has to win Florida. And, and again, I, I, it, depends on, it depends on what the map – it depends on what – can, can what, what changes in the map Trump can do and are the changes that he made in Wisconsin – and and Michigan and and Pennsylvania are they permanent changes? So, just sort of on a broader sense, we've been very specific here for a couple of minutes, yeah. um, and we, we're about to wrap it up. Um, probably, let, let's talk about a, a couple of demographics. I think that there was a missed opportunity there, and I sort of very briefly touched on it. He had an opportunity to talk about what he's done for the black community. And he largely missed it because he was so busy fighting with Biden and um, and Wallace that he, he kind of ignored that he could have, I mean, just taken a two minute and done nothing but blurt out statistics of things that he's done to help the economic situation there. Uh, and talk about inc uh, an increase in policing, which, despite what the media wants you to believe, is actually super popular amongst black voters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's um, right. It, he had an opportunity to... I think really make some hay 
with that, and he kind of missed it. He, he did miss it. That was a, he did not. And, and he missed record. the opportunity to clearly and emphatically answer the question of whether or not that he was uh, would denounce white supremacy. Yeah, so that, that, that's that's true. Yeah, that need to. He needed to have been way more clear on that. And you want to talk about what might become a campaign ad later? Mm. That maybe could. I, it's a little yeah. long, but That'd be a thing. I, I could see the Democrats going back to that over and over again, which it'd be hard to cut it in such a way because he does say right after Chris Wallace asks the question, he says, sure. I think what they'll do is they'll have a narrator say – uh, something to the effect of, and he was asked about white supremacy, and then show him kind of trying to deflect, and then saying something about the Proud Boys. And yeah, then, yeah, but um, the yeah. equal. He, he did ad, say it, but it was it was certainly something that can be. And the equal ad of that is, you know, I never, never uh, went out against Antifa, and then on top of that, when Biden was asked, would you support the radical left and doing things like packing the court and all this stuff? Biden's answer was, well, the issues will be what the issues will be if I'm elected. Mm. That's going to be it's, an equal ad. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's a whole See, other and, and that's another thing that was really funny. Um, usually, especially seasoned politicians like Biden, are much better at hiding the fact that they're dodging the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe Biden might as well have said, I don't want to answer that question, so I'm going to say some stuff for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Your Honor, I don't like this line of questioning. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I object to this line of questioning. <laughs> <laughs> On so, what grounds? Because so it's devastating in my case. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, exactly. he, uh, and I think nice. that was a general strategy of Biden tonight, is if it, do, if it wasn't going his, well, his way, if it was something that he did not want to answer directly, he always turned it to the voters and said, you get to decide. You vote. Go vote. This is your. This is the issue. Yeah. If, oh, yeah. If, if, if we can circle back to one one point um, yeah, go uh, that uh, Kayla made earlier, I, I was just I was just chewing on it and thinking about the missed opportunity to talk about what he's done for the black community. So I think there was some mixed messaging that went on with both of the candidates tonight, but. Sadly, especially with, with Trump, I mean, he led with talking about the First Step Act and trying to compare and contrast that to Biden's crime bill. That was a great place to start, but then, yeah, it fell apart as he got into the weeds, and he tried to wrap, so he started that segment by saying, I've done a lot for the black community by helping people who are incarcerated, and then he finished by saying, people want law and order. All right, you've got to be able to yeah. reconcile the two. But here, here's the thing, this is, this, is, this is a case, in my opinion, where Trump does things much better than how he speaks about it because you know I, I think he's actually been a great candidate in terms of trying to provide you know fairness for you know people that have been suffering not just justice but overkill while you know cracking down on you know militant groups whenever he gets the chance but he did not string that together in a coherent way tonight and it seemed contradictory and there is a great answer for that and that is the the people that are most hurt by black crime are blacks. Mm -hmm. the, and, and the people that have been most hurt by these Antifa uh, riots are blacks. They're not going to rebuild. How, They're how, not going to. Target is not. Target's going to get their insurance money. They're going to be fine. They're not going to rebuild that Target in, in Minneapolis. And who's really? that going to hurt? It's going to hurt that neighborhood. How great a moment would it have been? If one of Trump's rebuttals, and all he would have to say is blurt out one sentence and then just let it stand and let Joe Biden fumble over himself, all he would have had to say is, if you want to help the black community, stop burning down their cities. Ooh. Just leave it at that. Oh, that would have Good. been like, the best answer. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's all he would have had to say. And that's then you right. could have just watched Joe Biden try to backtrack on that. Um, right. And, and let's talk about one other key demographic that I think m might somewhat be affected by this performance, and that is uh, suburban women. Because that's that's a big key demographic that everybody's fighting over right now. And frankly, I think that Trump may have lost some voters in that area. Probably mm -hmm. not a huge swing. Yeah. But the problem with Trump's approach, he looked like a bully. He looked like he didn't want to play ball. He looked like he was just mad at Chris Wallace and, and mad at Joe Biden. That was a bad look for him. And when Joe, if Joe Biden can pull off the messaging of all this craziness started because of Trump, you know, instead of Trump was the catalyst that brought it about as opposed to a reaction to it, which I think he actually is a reaction to it. Um, all this craziness started the day that Trump took office. If you want it to end, you need to put me in office. If he can pull off that messaging and contrast it with that performance, that puts Joe Biden in a much better spot with that particular mm. line and see, of And see, the funny thing is Trump knows the answer to respond to that, and that is – 
Ferguson happened during the Obama administration. Sure. Baltimore happened during the Obama. He knows Which it. He said it. Credit, he pointed he it said out. It. Yeah. I, but but it didn't yeah. keep that problem. His his other weaknesses of being confrontational with the moderator mm -hmm. hurt him in that in that way. And and sadly, even though that's sort of a a presentation thing as opposed to a substance thing, that probably it had matters. a much more lasting it effect matters. than what he actually said, which was a great yeah. line about yeah. Ferguson happening under Obama and, and Joe Biden's watch. I mean, that was probably one of my favorite answers, honestly, because it's like, yep. that's exactly how this started. And nobody's talking about it because the most divisive our country has ever been since, obviously, the Civil War started under our first black president. So I think that that's a fantastic point. I want to play off of um, the uh, play off of that so as we segue into uh, our final question of the night. Best moment for Trump, best moment for Biden. Brian? Best moment for Trump was the the was I think the the very end where he was giving specifics about about the the corruption of the Democratic Party that that Biden was that Biden was involved in that that Biden was the one that started his that that they didn't accept the transition in 2016 that that Biden was the person that brought up uh, the what is it the hat not the Hatch Act the, the Logan Act the Logan Act uh, yeah, that was good. and and he 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 absolutely he may have gotten a little bit too far in the details on that but it was it was lucid and it was I think fulfilling. Um, the best moment for Biden, ooh, that's a toughie. I would say, um, there, I would say that I think a lot of people will actually be very moved by his defense of Hunter by, by bringing in that the Hunter is a recovering uh, drug addict, he's going to get a lot of sympathy for that. And it was, and and you really, Biden's advantage is he he gets an idea that you're sympathetic for him, that he's sympathetic to you, and you got that came through in that moment more than at other times, in my opinion. Okay, Matt. See, so I'm going to try to answer this question based on you know what would be what I think would be most persuasive to uh, an undecided voter. Mm -hmm. um, so best moment for Trump, I, I agree, would be towards the end. I think he he hit a home run when he was talking about uh, the problems with um, mail-in ballots. You know, he, he he had a lot of facts. He got very specific. He, he was able to articulate, you know, the problems with the process, uh, how it's going to work. And he, he did paint a very clear picture for the American people of how chaotic and how corrupt this would be if it was allowed to proceed. Biden, in contrast, tried to... Um, you know, he, he, was, he was trying to give kind of like the fluffy emotional appeal to, you know, oh, it's, it's about you, the people. I want you to be able to vote. So go. But in contrast to how Trump tore it down, I don't think Biden defended his position very well. So I think I think on the debate on that issue, Trump won very clearly. And I think this is going to be persuasive to a lot of voters who, who are wondering between these two guys who really has the competence to know how to run this thing. Um, so I think Trump did very well with that. Biden's best moment, um, yeah, I think his defense of Hunter was uh, uh, very good, but I, I personally would give the edge to how he handled um, the, the, the question about uh, racial issues. Now, I think it's not because I agree with him on the merits. I don't. But when you know Trump fired off, he, he in, in response to Wallace's question, he went around, he rambled, he got lost, he argued with Chris Wallace, he attacked Joe Biden, spun out a little bit. Biden came back. And his ability to look into the camera, to connect okay. emotionally with you know the voters, and 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 to talk about things like we want fairness, we want equity, and for the record, I want all those things too. Okay, right. absolutely. It was a bunch of fluffy buzzwords that didn't mean anything, but it connected with the viewer. <laughs> right. yeah. And frankly, right. when Democrats win, that's why. Mm -hmm. That's why. And, and on this issue, it, it tears I really me up. I love puppies. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know, it, it, what really stinks is on this issue. I think Trump has. You know, done a very good job of, of managing the situation between trying to keep public order while at the same time not allowing injustice to continue. 
But the way that he packaged it, he phrased it, tried to communicate it, was horrible. And Biden, I think, stole that moment from him and made him look bad. So I think that was one of Biden's best moments tonight. Laura? Well, as my husband will tell you, probably one of the worst things that you could do is ask me to pick a favorite or a best, if anything. Um, but I think for Biden... It's only because you change your mind every 10 minutes. No, that's actually real, though. That's true. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> percent true. I shared a mic with you for a year and a half, I know. Yeah, um, and I'm a, I'm a Enneagram 5, so I'm probably weighing out 500 different factors in this, but for Biden, his best moment is any moment that he didn't just fall over dead, so that's my opinion on that. <laughs> he did not do that to his credit. Exactly, and I think honestly it was the best thing he could have possibly done, So, and he only fumbled like a couple of times. He did. So he, I he expected was... like Tennessee style fumbles, and I mean the football team. So, She's a Tennessee fan, just so you all know. Yeah. Well, an Auburn fan when I'm here. Um, <laughs> since I've moved here. <laughs> when in Rome. Yeah. Um, and then for Trump, I'd say probably his best moment. That's, that's, I, have, I have so much struggle with that. I don't know. I, okay, I got nothing on the Trump one. He okay. had so many good ones. Okay. Shannon? Oh, I'm, I'm going to agree with Matt on I believe that Trump's strongest moment was in talking about the mail-in ballots and he, he came in strong on that and knew what he was talking about without getting into too many personal attacks and things like I do think he detracted from that some when he started talking about tossing ballots here and there in the 2016 election which made things look bad on him yeah. and so I, I think he could have done without that part without that part he was really great on all that and um I guess for Biden, I guess like I said before, I, I was overall impressed with the way that he held himself together. And I don't know if there's any one particular moment that stands out to me. It's just the fact that he was more measured throughout the whole thing and um, had a bit more decorum than our president did as far as not yeah. arguing with the moderator. Yeah. So I, I think his biggest, the, the thing that made him look the best is that... Yeah. He didn't argue with the moderator throughout the whole thing. Yeah. So I agreed with the mail-in ballot thing, so I, I know I'm not given a lot of diversity here, but I'm, I'm going to have to go with uh, Chris and, and Shannon on this. When it comes to Trump's best moment, it was the mail-in ballot question, but not because of the answer that he gave. And let me explain that. It was fantastic from a classical debater's perspective like I am. It was good because it was very fact-based, very substantive. It stuck to the issue. It was pointed. It was organized. Mm -hmm. Most of the voters don't care about that. What they do care about is in that moment, because of all those things that I just mentioned, he looked presidential. Yes. He yeah. looked right. like the commander-in-chief. Mm. And to all those voters that are undecided, for those – what, two or three minutes uh, that he was giving his initial response, and even some of the moments after that while they were still talking about that subject, they could look at that man and say, this guy could be my president and be good at it. Unfortunately, that was not true for a lot of the rest of it. Uh, he, he looked you know, like really candidate Trump from like early 2015, and that's not a good look for Trump. Not at this point. Not, mm -hmm. not at this point, Because, no. because, of, because a, a re-election campaign is always about the incumbent. It's always about Trump. It's not about Biden. Biden just has to be an, a reasonable alternative. And I, I mean, we can debate whether that's true or not, whether he is or not. Sure. But but his his the the mark he has to get to is is there a num a num enough people that are fed up with the guy in office and that I look like a reasonable alternative. I, I think and, that's and, fair. And, and I think you're. The, the temperament thing really does play against Trump in that place. I, I think it does, uh, but, but I do think that that was Trump's best moment specifically for that. And one other thing that I, I want to point out about Joe Biden and what I thought his best moment was, uh, I don't even remember what the question was. So I, I don't even remember where it was in the debate, but I remember this kind of striking home with me. There was one point in the debate where um, – Chris Wallace made a point about how difficult it had been to moderate, and uh, it was right before he was asking Joe Biden a question. Before Joe Biden answered his question, because it, it was something like Chris Wallace made a point about how 
uh, it was, he said something like, I'm the moderator. You know, he did it a hundred times. I don't have to give you an exact quote. And then Joe Biden's response to that was something like, yeah, it is hard to get a word in edgewise, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. uh, and then Chris Wallace said something that almost sounded like he was agreeing with Joe Biden. That was a horrible moment for Trump, a great moment for Biden. And re the reason is specifically it a made him look like a victim. It made Trump look like a bully. And it made it seem like the establishment and normalcy is on the side of Joe Biden and not on the side of Trump, that Trump is an agent of chaos. That's the worst possible look that President Trump could have right now. And so that was a moment that I thought was incredibly powerful for Joe Biden. Do I think it was a knockout punch? No. Do I think that people are going to remember this you know, five days from now? Probably not. But if you're asking me what his best moment was in the debate, I think that was it, and that was why. It, it was the moment where Trump looked like he was the anomaly, and Joe Biden is the anchor that can save you from the storm that is Donald Trump. Well, and Trump is still trying to run on that. I'm the anomaly. I'm he's his. I mean, yeah, he doesn't need to lose it completely. No, no, right. But, but he that's needs a, that's to a look very, like a controlled burn that's as opposed a very, to a that, That's right. He's and he's very difficult for him to do that. His 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 temperament does not let him do that very well. Well, guys, I think it's been fantastic. I appreciate yeah. you being here with us. Great. I had a lot of fun, so we'll be back uh, next time on Tactics. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to be back up and running on Thursday for some more breakdown of this and, and other news stories. Thanks so much to Byron for being here and pushing all the right Thanks, buttons, keeping us on the air. Appreciate it. All right, so we will be back then. In the meantime, stay the course, friends. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them, I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.